Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Romana. I am in Mumbai, in India right now. And I'm very, very excited and really looking forward to uh, this conversation between myself, Orlando, and, and Daniel. And maybe Orlando and Daniel, we can just take a moment as people continue to drop in to to just check in. So maybe just uh, introducing yourself, saying hello, however you'd like to, and and maybe just a feeling. So what's present for you right now? What's a feeling that's there for you right now? Um, I can go. So I'm Daniel. I'm based in Bombay, which is very sweaty and humid at the moment. Um, I think I'm feeling a sense of anticipation because I think this is a super important topic, very close to my heart. Um, it's awesome to see 56 participants. Um, so I hope we do justice to this in your time. And yeah, I mean, I, I think the best way to introduce myself is I'm a dad, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm a traveler. Um, I have a four-year-old daughter who's the center of my world. Um, and yeah, I'm, it's just been a beautiful journey um, on, uh, with Because You, my company, as well as, you know, figuring out life one step at a time. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. Uh, from here in El Salvador, it's good morning to all of you. Uh, it's kind of rainy today, so it's, I don't know, I like rain. Um, I'm Orlando. Uh, I'm uh, I'm also a dad. I have uh, two kids. I have uh, one that's graduating this uh, from high school this in a couple of weeks, and the other one's nine years old. Um, I'm married. Uh, I'm a secretary for Human for Human Human for Foundation, and also a founder for Manuales para Sobrevivir dot org. Uh, and what I'm feeling is actually that I'm, I'm thankful. Thankful and, and a bit like nervous, uh, but mostly thankful uh, because of the of the opportunity of being here with all of you and and discussing something that we're very passionate about and something that's really important about mental health and how we from our experiences have uh, channeled our 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 experiences in order to help more people. So so that's that's about it. And I'm really thankful and expecting to have a, a really candid conversation with with you guys. Thank you. Thank you both. And, and once again, welcome. And thank you for bringing in your whole selves and your identity as, as parents, as fathers. And uh, it's such a big part, I think, of, of life. And so already feeling that this conversation is really going to bring in everything that uh, makes us who we are. I was thinking about how um, we can go into our conversation all three of us, I think, do the work for mental health in, in different ways. So uh, Orlando, with your work around using narratives and communities for sexual abuse survivors. Daniel, your work has been around community support for in the mental health organization you're building. And, uh, and for me, it's, it's really been in education and how can education be more trauma-informed, be more sensitive, uh, but before we go into the work, I was hoping we could maybe start with just uh, reflecting and sharing with each other a little bit, given our own lived experience and our panel is called uh, lived experience. And so I guess the invitation to us um, is to really make this a space where, where we can share and bring in our own stories. So as much as we feel comfortable to uh, to really share how, how our own lived experience and our different engagements with our own mental health and um, life experiences has shaped who we are and shaped the choices we make. So maybe starting there on given, given your life experience, when you think today about this, this phrase, mental health, um, what really does it uh, mean to you? Uh, maybe that's changed over the years and maybe you're still finding an answer, but would love to just tap into how that is for you today. Well, if 
if if I may start, uh, actually, it's it's kind of like uh, mental health is it's it's something that probably now it, it has a name, but as as I was growing up, I didn't know what it was. Uh, uh, I once saw uh, when I was already an adult, I saw a TED talk that talked about uh, emotional or mental hygiene. That if we were taught uh, to brush our teeth. And to 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 wash our thoughts and 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 think about our thoughts as we were washing our teeth, uh, we would have a, a great mental health when we grow up. But th actually, that's not something that we're we're taught when we're um, kids. And in my experience, I started now that I know that's called mental health because once I grew up, I never knew. I I just knew that something was wrong uh, mm -hmm. because I was uh, I was sexually abused when I was eight years old. Uh, I just knew that something ha was wrong, but the, the the matter of the fact is that I thought that something was wrong with me, and not that something had wrong had happened to me. And uh, I grew up with that, and I I I never knew uh, what what was to feel something good. I mean, uh, I grew up and I started drinking when I was like 13 years old, and I I became an alcoholic and I stopped drinking when I was 25. Thank God, so I I stopped. Uh, but until fr from 13 years old until 25, I knew that something was not right in my in my mental health, um, and uh, I I looked for help, but I I had no idea uh, that there there were different kind of specialists in mental health that could help me uh, in a different way. So uh, I I I think that mental health is something that that now nowadays in my life. It's something really important um, in, in a point in a way that I have to see not only my physical health, but I have to go hand in hand with my mental health uh, and 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 try to be uh, healthy in, in, in general uh, point of view. But I grew up with that, not knowing what what it was. I started looking for help uh, and thank God I found it. And when I was about like 25 years old, I stopped drinking and everything came back to my, to, everything made sense when I stopped drink, drinking. And I got help from a psychologist and specially, specialized in post-traumatic stress disorder. And mm -hmm. uh, it all kind of started to, 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 to make sense. And that's when I took uh, the idea of doing something that I had suffered and and um, trying to make it work for everyone else that was not 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 so lucky to have him found help so early in their life. So that's why manualesparasobrevivir.org uh, launched. And it's, uh, like you said, Romana, it's a digital platform uh, that wants to uh, give resources to uh, sexual abuse victims that now are in their youth or adulthood and don't know how to face the, their trauma. So this, like, it brings them near to uh, the steps that all other survivors took so that they can know wh what to do. And it also has a psychologist directory, a specialized psychologist directory that can uh, give them therapy for free or uh, in, in, in really low costs. And it's basically based on the, on the principle of the AA book that's uh, the, the 12 step for Alcoholics Anonymous uh, because I found that that's something, uh, not thinking really about mental health, but thinking as a survivor, that only a survivor knows what a victim is going to suffer. So, uh, because you've lived it. And if you've lived it, you know what's going to happen. Uh, so if we could uh, reduce the years of searching for answers for people, then we we we, we thought that, that that was really valuable. So that's why, why, why we launched our project. And uh i don't know maybe i i talked about many things right now so i leave uh daniel no no thank you orlando and thank you for sharing your deeply personal story um i think romana for me after being many on being on this journey for many many years um mental health good mental health for me is is a recognition that you know i can be myself Right? I, I truly believe that all of us are wise, creative, joyful human beings and good mental health just enables us to 
get back to that sometimes because bad mental health kind of clouds who we are as as those people um that's one i think the other is you know mental health for me is and just a some kind of self awareness that irrespective of how you're feeling whether it's grief anger sadness whatever it is um it's all parts of us right it's and when we bring our whole selves to to the world it's actually beautiful authentic um so that's what comes to mind when i hear kind of mental health so i think similar to orlando i I don't think I ever thought about mental health um consciously till much later in my life. Uh grew up in India where you know obviously it's not something that's talked about very widely um but but thinking but even then I I think you know I dealt with it in a way that I didn't realize when I was growing up. So my dad um you know dealt with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder his entire life pretty much. Uh so I grew up pretty much seeing him on the bed right and that, and you can imagine as a young boy growing up what that probably meant um kind of fast forward to you know 25 years later i think this was 7 8 years ago um i also had a diagnosis of bipolar disorder and i think like the uh, it's as you can imagine that journey has been it was really difficult complex disempowering on many levels and the reason i do the work i do today with because you is is i think the journey that i've been on has been amazing and great on one le- level because it's really helped me you know go on this self this journey to understand myself and see what really works for myself but on the other hand it's also been really lonely and you know not great <laughs> right and even now i mean it, i still go through my ups and downs pretty much every single month and some days um so it's been a intense interesting fulfilling um creative fun sad all those you know adjectives that you can use um but i think yeah that's kind of what it means to me and a little bit of my journey thank you can i, can I ask the same question to you yes yes uh, thank you both for sharing i think there's there's so much that i can i can relate to uh it it struck me that both of you shared about what it was like as as children and then that journey into adulthood when when finally as adults uh, we began to put the names of of mental health um, and and similar for me i think when i think about growing up i was uh, probably around 12, 11 or 12 when um when i started having my first panic attacks um and and it was just confusing because it was a a physical symptom and uh, so there was no connection made at that time that it was something in my nervous system or something about my mental health and and so a lot of my uh, childhood years um went to in going to a series of doctors and trying to treat all of these physical symptoms which Uh, I think Orlando, like you said, just made me feel like, oh, something's wrong with me. Um, and that deep feeling of something's wrong with me, something's broken in me, uh, I think really almost added to it. So if there was so much going on in my life anyway, uh, with uh, with family and my experiences as a child and and abuse, and then to add to that this way of seeing oneself of something's wrong with me. i just remember being really angry <laughs> and uh, angry at myself angry at the world angry at at everyone i was just a, an angry person uh, growing up um and i think uh, that that's been a, a shift for me in in thinking about mental health it's not that the anger was a problem but it was that i was so consumed by only anger um and so i think a lot now about how how can mental health be uh just having a love for for oneself uh so even on those days today when i go into the the slump which which still happens uh how can i still feel a love for myself and still feel a love uh for the world and and a wanting to to live and a wanting to show up um in the world and 
I think that's that's still an exploration. Uh, but that's really, I think, what uh, being healthy and being well is is sort of coming coming around to for me. Just uh, feeling that that love um, for self and the world. Mm. Yeah, maybe we can just pause and and uh, see what uh, how all of this is landing for our participants. And I can see some chats. Um, so what's coming up for you as you listen to this? How do you think about mental health? I think there's there's a question about, uh, says, thank you so much for sharing. How did you each find the courage to speak about your life experience, especially given the stigma that it's still so present in our countries? Mm. Um. I don't know. In my case, for example, I it was. I think that 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 for me it, it was like stop drinking was stop. I mean, when I stopped drinking, I think it prepared me to 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 speak about what I suffered uh, as a sexual abuse survivor because yeah. I stopped drinking when I was 25 years old. So I had to face a lot of friends that I <laughs> telling them I'm not drinking anymore. So, so it was like, uh, I had to like stop caring about what people thought. And uh, because uh, at that age, it's very tough. So you, you get al alienated by your friends because you're not anymore part of the party or, or, or things like that. So I think that prepared me. Uh, and later on, as I managed to, to, kind of put the words that I was uh, sexually abused when I was a child. Uh, it, became, it became really, I got really nervous when I spoke about it the, in the first times. Um, but it wasn't like, I mean, I think this is the biggest audience where I've told <laughs> this any, any time. Uh, so uh, it was... I think it, when I started embracing that it was part of me, uh, I stopped being scared of sharing it. Uh, and it's not something that that should be a, a stigma for anyone. It doesn't mean anything. It's it's something that happened to you. Uh, and many people, like you say, in, in our country, for example, in El Salvador or in Central America, uh, you're used to 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 hearing that from uh, from women also they're not not that much from men because men are like uh, they're going to think that you you are uh, some kind of uh, a freak or that you are not uh, heterosexual or any kind of uh, sexual orientation and uh, for me it was like like uh, i don't know i stopped caring about what people thought about me and i thought that it was, was part of my healing process and that's that's what i did I don't know you guys, Romana and, and, and Daniel, if you would like to share on, on that. Yeah, for me, I think it's been a process. Um, I think initially it took, I think it took about six or seven years. Uh, obviously, people close to me knew I was very open about my bipolar disorder diagnosis to people at work. Um, like I remember the first seven years, you know, I, I tried everything in the book, right? I think um, it, like I made this conscious, conscious decision that I don't care about the diagnosis. I'm just want a full life. I want to have a family. I want to thrive. I want to travel the world and I want to do everything in my, in my power possible. And I just tried everything. Um, and slowly and surely that kind of helped me, you know, be stable, do work, thrive. And at a certain point, you know, I think that gave me the strength to say, you know what I like, it's just one part of me, like you said, Orlando, it's, it's not my entirety, right? And um, I can still thrive doing this. Um, that is one, which is the journey took some time. So um, I think it's important for people who are seeing this and later as well to know that it's, it's only when you're comfortable sharing, you should. Um, I think the other part is, you know, like the whole emphasis of because you, my company is, is, to say, you know, all of us are on this journey, right? On, on, on the entire spectrum. Some of us a little farther than some others. And um, like what I, the something that I lacked when I started the journey was um, a lack of kind of role models, people who are out there 
you know, talking about this, being very open about, you know, their own journeys, their own struggles, but a very information based rather than very personal, you know, the narrative was missing, I thought. Um, yeah. So, so for me, you know, like it, I took on the responsibility of saying, okay, I'm going to put myself out there and I'd love everyone else to join uh, because this is a messy journey, but let's just do it together. Yeah. It sounds like for both of you, and I'm, I'm thinking about my own experience as well, there's been something really important about, about naming our experience and about being able to share it. Um, and I think for, for both of you, that has really come into, uh, into your work as well and the way you've built the work. Um, I'm wondering, looking at the chat as well, there's something about what was that like? I think both as as men, you all have both named it. So as men to have shared, uh, to be vulnerable, um, and you know that comes with its own sort of challenging some stereotypes, uh, and to say something that that was difficult perhaps both for you, but also as both of you have shared for different social groups that you were a part of. I wonder if we can go into that a little bit. What was it like? Uh, what were those first reactions you got? And who was that support system for you? Uh, well, for, for I think it's it's when you manage to to speak about what happened to you and you put it out there, it's it's liberating. And mm. it's not only liberating, but it's also powerful because yeah. people people are not prepared for you to be so liberated. Uh, most of the people are like whoa he just said he was raped what what and and they're like scared about what you 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 say and 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 that's that's really a great and powerful tool because uh, for example in my in my case it's not like i go around and tell oh i i, I was raped when i was eight years old I, I i it's not like you have a thing on your forehead right and but i i always the times that i've i've said it it has been with a purpose and the purpose it's in order for me to help more people and uh, uh, for example in, in in my in our project in manuelesparasurevir.org one of the things that that we've done is like um, we have different um, short films animated short films written by sexual abuse survivors and that's that's kind of a narrative tool for you to resignificate your trauma, because once you write it and you put it out there, it, your your trauma has a different purpose. It's not only to make you feel hurt; it's it, it's it's it becomes a tool to help others. And that that was like for me, for example, my the the way that I've addressed it with different uh, audiences and social uh, places and everything. It has always been for that purpose. If I have shared it, it's because I'm looking for a help for the, the project or because I'm talking to someone else that's going to contribute in a way. Or And it's always been like that. So the, 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 the most important thing, and, and I guess that this is like humans, the way we are built, is that we're not ready for people that are so liberated in, 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 many, in many parts. Uh, not all of them, but 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 I think that when you manage to overcome something and and just pick it out, uh, it's it it can be intimidating for someone else, but it also can be so so inspiring, and that's what I've received from other people also that that have been so openly uh, and and been able to share what they're, they 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 have they they've been through and uh, building like a community of mental health and the support groups that you have, uh, it's been between these people. Yeah, I mean, I think that feeling of liberating and inspiring uh, really hits home for me. Um, I mean, I think as a man, it's been interesting, right? Because on one hand, the, the sense of sharing what I've been through Actually, when I made the decision to do it, I, I think it kind of, you know, just burst forth. And mm -hmm. as I was reflecting on why that is, I, I think I've kind of been surrounded by incredible, strong women my entire life, right? And I think there's a certain feminine, and when I say feminine, I just mean 
you know, there's a certain feminine energy leadership that's kind of needed in this kind of space, which I think you know, I was naturally surrounded by. Um, I think the more difficult thing for me was in my healing journey to really, you know, as a man, open, like have the conversation with myself, right? That, you know, this is what I'm going through. This is how I'm feeling. You know, so sometimes people will ask me, how are you feeling? I'm like, I don't know. I don't really know. I, I don't have no access to my body. I don't know what I'm feeling. Um, so I think that's a really interesting topic and which, which is very close to my heart on how you get men, mostly men, but also many of us have lost that connection with our bodies and ourselves. Um, how do we get that back? Um, and similar to Orlando, I think when I put my story out there, there's only love and respect and, um, you know, like, oh yeah, I've been through that as well. I, I didn't like, thank God I can share this with someone. Just a feeling of safety um, that's come out from it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you both. And, and that connection to that, there's both a, a personal sense of, of liberation but also in, in when we name it, we're making it possible for so many other people to name it. And it sounds like both of you have really received that um, support from others, but also made that connection um, for others about, okay, let's name this because it's something that's happening to us. Uh, there's, it's really getting over that pain, uh, but doing it so purposefully. Just conscious, we've got like a million questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there, maybe one that, for all of us can look at and see if there's a question that specifically calls to you that yeah. you'd like to speak into because they're all great. I'd love to, like Lou has asked about the one caring and trusted relationship. I think that's so important. It's, it, it's incredibly important. I, I think for me, I, you know, that person has been my wife. And I think, uh, especially, and someone else has asked, when do you, how do you open up and so on? I think, like, for me, it was that one trusted relationship. And, you know, even now we, we have a contract, right? It's almost like she knows me more better than I know myself. And uh, keeping that line of communication open with her has been really, really important to, like, to grow, to heal, to process all the stuff that you said, Lou. Um, and yeah, it's, it's super important. I feel if no one else, just that one person, it could be a partner, it could be a friend. Um, yeah, that's something that came to mind. Thanks, Danny. Orlando, is there something you'd like to respond to from the chat? Yeah, uh, th there's there's one that, that that about in which ways your emotion your personal experiences help you to question and propose new alternative approaches to addressing mental health at the community level. Well, I, I guess one of the things that we, uh, for example, in my case, I'm not a mental health expert. I'm a survivor that that decided to do something with what I thought would, would was was going to help uh, others. Uh, but what I what I, what I've been seeing is that it's it's been a journey that you have to is from the mental health and my experience have to be flexible and that you don't know where it's going to end up. Uh, we, we launched this digital platform and now we're, we're talking about how we can help uh, convicts that are in um, trust phase. That I don't know how you translate that, but that they can also that they can go back to their communities now and they just have to check in uh, a few times uh, because most of the convicts were sexually abused in their childhood so right mm -hmm. now we are kind of being trying to to use our experience in order to make this something work for them and and help them in the reinsertion reinsertion uh, in society uh, so so it's one of the things about how how our ex personal experiences uh, take us to uh, to see or propose new alternative approaches for community, I think that's that's about it. That we, we our 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 ideas or our projects they don't necessarily just live in one format, and we have to like uh, 
always be flexible to bend it a little so that we can uh, accomplish our purpose uh, in in why we established what we did uh, for for every one of us. So so in my case, I think that flexibility and and being aware that 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 your experience and your efforts can help others is something really important. And you have to. It's also a decision, right? Because you can't you can't uh, uh, receive everything uh, by yourself. So so I think that having a community of of allies is really important. So you can uh, listen. I have this. Can you help in this in this way? Or 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 having these communities is really important. And that's that that was something that that, that really interested me in the questions. Yeah, I think that that integration of of looking at it technically, looking at it from like a um, from an expertise perspective, and then from our experience uh, having gone through it, I I think even when I think about my experience, um, so much of my mental health would manifest in physical health challenges, and so much of it, I think, like this uh, most recent comment in the chat, I did not recognize. I was struggling with my mental health because I found ways to cope with it. Uh, and it just became different ways of, of acting out, whether that was uh, not being healthy or whether that was certain behaviors. Like I, I've sm I'm, I'm 35 and I've smoked for 20 years of my life. Um, and I recently quit five months ago. Uh, but I, it did not occur to me that the addiction was, was a symptom of something much deeper that I was going through. Um, and, and so that uh, complexity of actually when we're going through something or when we've experienced so much trauma and stress, it shows up in so many different ways and it can't always be responded to by, by one person or by one treatment or one therapy. Um, so that that really resonates with me that it needs sort of a a broader, more comprehensive approach and and the community, Danny, I know you've taken a lot of work um, as well from a community perspective. I wonder if there's anything coming up for you around that and how you've seen community really be that support system at because you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, any of any of you, any of us who've gone on this journey knows how lonely it is, right? And I, um, and I think having the community, the, the biggest feedback we've had, we've run these group sessions, group therapy sessions over the last two, three years now. And the biggest feedback has been, you know, I finally don't feel alone. I don't feel crazy. I don't feel, you know, I, I finally have a place where I'm no longer alone. Um, that and coming back to that question of how do you know when to name and feel, I think that's something we are not taught, right? Like, I, I don't know what's how to like whether this pain in my chest is anxiety. I don't know it. I just think it's, you know, I'm feeling. So I, I think there's when you do. So our methodology is always can we break people in a group, which is a little bit more than a support group? Can we actually teach them the skills of, mm -hmm. you know, learning what is going on with your body? Um, learning to name your emotions, your, your thoughts, your feelings, separating them out, um, but also accessing that through different modalities, right? I think that's one of the, and this is, I think, where community approaches, different practitioners, um, mental health professionals can really come together um, because, you know, world over, the supply demand gap is massive, right? We don't have enough mental health professionals for all of us who need it. Um, so are there creative ways for people to do stuff in groups and communities uh, where you can bring people together and teach them the skills? Because you go on, on Google, you're not going to get the st stuff that you're, you're saying, right? It really needs to be taught. Um, so yeah, that's a question. That's something that I leave with people on this, you know, who, who are here. There are obviously examples that have been done all the whole world over, but, you know, um, especially now the relationship between the body and mental health that's sort of gaining ground everywhere. Um, I think in the developing world, that's something that we're still, you know, learning. And I think there's so much of um, opportunity for sort of, you know, that kind of work to become mainstream. 
Mm. Yeah. So there's something about um, owning our stories and sharing our stories. There's something about relationships and a community of support. And then the other one we've added now is something about skills. Like there's there's skills mm. that we can build a muscle around, uh, whether it's the regulation or naming our feelings, um, being able to recognize the signs from our body. Mm. Seems like these are the the three of three things that uh, we've identified as as say strategies or practices to respond um, to mental health in in different ways. Yeah, and I think you know the the complexity of the work, and this is why it's a massive challenge for all of us in this space, is that it's a ridiculously it's ridiculously complex because it's unique, right? Each person has a kind of a unique journey. And you know, sometimes you go two steps forward and three steps back. So yes, there are foundational skills and strategies and all that stuff, but each person <laughs> really has to make it their own. And how do we do that at scale is, is, is I think, a question, you know, we have to hold. Um, you know, I, I know Chris, Chris Underhill, who did the keynote, has been very successful in, you know, scaling community mental health approaches, you know, to the entire world, right? And um, I think that's a question now for us. How do we take this to the next level in terms of skills and especially the young people who need it? Um, yeah. What's that uh, exploration been like for you, Orlando? Getting getting something to scale. What's how have you been exploring that idea? Uh, you mean that uh, scaling the the like getting more uh, people to share their life experiences and and that that, that sort of scale. Uh, actually, it's it's been. In, in in our experience in, in in our project it's like it has it has become very natural uh, mm -hmm. because I don't know how but but once we started like one story led to another mm -hmm. um, and because if you see that the data in the case of, of of sexual abuse survivors in the world it's like one out of every four women and one out of every six men uh, say that they have been sexually abused in some sort of way in, during their childhood. So it's like you see a place where there's 10 people and there's someone. Uh, and it has been like very, very openly uh, discussed. Not the way that people are willing to write their stories and put them into a short film, but we have been a really... A, I don't know how to say it, uh, very supported by the psychologists uh, in, for example, in El Salvador. And uh, they are actually uh, proposing to be part of the survivors, survivors that write their stories to their patients that have already been in a, in a really advanced uh, therapy because it's part of healing to put your story into words. Um, and so, so we 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 received the, some kind of some stories right now, and uh, we are also building up our scale uh, as not only for for survivors telling the stories, but also for uh, people that or organizations that can be, give therapy in other countries. Um, for example, we we have right now people in in Uruguay. And uh, in Chile, in Santiago de Chile, uh, uh, that they can, uh, we're about to to uh, integrate them into the platform, and we're scaling like it's it's a very lonely uh, process <laughs> because you have to keep on knocking doors and and people telling you yes and people telling no no it's not me uh, but but it's it's been really a, a great acceptance from from the the right people and and I think that the most important part of this is that you have. Me, for example, not being a mental health expert, uh, having like the, the 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 guidance from mental health experts, uh, because we we work a lot with really really big big uh, organizations here uh, that that have all the experience uh, 
assessing us. So, so which, uh, which credentials should the psychologists have, for example, their certifications and everything. So we have to be really responsible with that. And the scale for us right now is uh, it's getting better. I mean, we're, we're, we're growing, but we're I don't know in a in a pilot phase because we launched early in January, building our 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 community. Yeah, I'm thinking about the at uh, at Kizazi and uh, and from what both of you shared, this idea of just actually just having space to talk about something that all of us experience in some way or form has has also been something that when you started in school so in many of our schools uh, we work a crime in the day to have some like a, some sort of circle some sort of sharing circle where children and their teachers and and their families just have time to sit and share uh, and that could be as simple as sharing how am I feeling today uh, or it can go how do I feel about myself and uh, what are what are some things that trouble me what are challenges I have mm. and so I wonder if it's really the that simple act of just being able to in different ways create that space and time to speak with each other to lean into each other's life experiences. Uh, and that can almost be a simple way to, to get some sort of ball rolling where we can bring our whole selves in. And that might create a little more space for communities to recognize that, oh, the, there is more suffering and there's many of us that, that just need that support from each other. Mm. Uh, so I think we... We have about 10 minutes left. I uh, want to see if we have any more questions coming in from our audience, our participants. That's an interesting question, as in Catherine, when applying for jobs in the field of mental health. My, I mean, <laughs> my quick response is if you're in the field of mental health and the HR discriminates, you should probably, you know, take that as a sign that you, that's not a job you want, um, especially if, if they're in the mental health space. <laughs> but I think yeah, it... Yeah, I wonder if we can just, I want to broaden that question. Yeah, uh, broad, yeah. There's been a couple of them. So both of you also work and set up and run organizations and teams. Um, so maybe if there's something around that, like how has your lived experience uh, made you think about running your organizations or setting up teams uh, or all things HR really? So maybe you can pick one, but how has that helped you do something different or made you rethink some things in, in HR, in people management, in hiring? I mean, for me, it's um, it's fairly. I mean, it's. I think it's kind of the the belief that, irrespective of whatever you're dealing with, uh, as long as you have the support and the the space, um, you know, you you can pretty much, you know, as long as you're qualified and you do, you you have the credentials, you can do the job, right? Um, because I've gone through the journey myself. I think standing in the shoes of someone who's you know dealing with anxiety or depression or whatever it is I think this makes it easier and faster to pick up um, in terms of other organizations I, I think it's a case-by-case -case basis to be honest I think people are being a little bit more open but you know we, I think we're much we are far far away from where we need to be right I think it's um, I, I think that's a big part of the work so I I'm helping set up a, a business in India working on employee mental health. And one of the things that we're focusing on is, you know, working with HR to do exactly this. How can we be a little bit more sensitive? 
what what do managers need to know um how do we you know work with people who are struggling a little bit um so i, I think it's a little bit on both sides like and i think there needs to be a systemic you know this is a place that you can come irrespective of what are you dealing with and at the same time you know there needs to be an openness of the employee to say you know this is something i i'm kind of going through is it okay like mm-hmm. i think it's a little bit of both but the systemic thing needs to be in place first mm-hmm. i think that in in the in the in the question that they're 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 addressing is like if it should help that you say your lived lived experience uh, or not when you are like looking for a job mm-hmm. i think it, it only depends if it's gonna if it 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 has a purpose on doing it i don't i mean if you have a cv and you put like i'm a sexual abuse survivor why o sea why why would it be relevant uh, it's it's it might be relevant because you're a person that it depends on your mental health story right because you might be a survivor but you might be totally not well in your mind uh, or you can be a, a really oriented person and 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 functional it, i think that that depends i don't i don't i don't know the, the answer for for if it would be good or bad for you to place it on your on your resume uh, yeah what i think from a, from a company point of view because as you said romana it's like our day job and our night job uh, and the day job uh, requires to uh, build a business and uh, um, i think it's a responsibility from companies if you are willing to have a high performance team to be connected with their feelings and if you're not connected with people's feelings then you are probably have to re- rethink your approach from human resources uh, or your purpose as a company because nowadays i think that if you are disconnected from what people feel or, or from people's mental health then you are really not not nurturing people and and people are just going to see you as a company as a transaction and are are only going to see you as a you pay my bills and then i go and if there's someone that's going to look at, at you as a person then you will go to someone that where else when they will will uh, understand or, or will take will, will care about what you're feeling so i guess for for my point of view as a, as a as a part of a company wise um uh, my my lived experience has helped me to listen more to other people uh, and uh, to be aware of other people's feelings and uh, i guess also not not being paternalist but but really being aware that that you you just don't do a job but there's feelings behind the person that's working with you and uh, i guess it's it's really important for people to share what they're they've lived through if they feel comfortable with uh, and you as an employer to 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 be aware that that you have a, a responsibility of taking care of people beyond paying their salaries yeah what a beautiful uh, shift that can be for us to really think about uh, not just the employee or or not just the child or the student but really recognize that there's a whole person and we may not always know the story but every one of us carries carries a story and how do we as uh, as managers as leaders make that sort of the the way that we hold and and build culture we nurture people that was lovely orlando thank you if i could make a another related point to family right someone asked the impact of this on our family <laughs> yeah and that's I think a tough one <laughs> yeah i mean it's tough and you know it's it it is very difficult based on what you're dealing with i think you know that your family your close family the brunt of whatever you're going through is on your family right and that is a ripple effect um and i think as people with lived experience working with other people i think that's something that is very top of mind that similar to what you're saying it's not just that person you're working with but the ripple effect it can have on that family 
right? Which is both great when you look at it, but also being conscious that that person's struggles also has a big impact on the family. So just want to put that out there if I saw that question. Yeah, I think that that particularly deeply resonates with me. I think uh, I think my mental health challenges were not uh, only mine. Mm. Uh, so much of that was in the ecosystem of the family and and everything that we went through as a family. And uh, so a lot of my challenges and it continues today, like being a being a Muslim woman in India today comes with a certain level of stress. And that's not mine alone. But as, as Danny, you're pointing out, my family experiences a certain level of stress that comes with an identity we have. And so also when we look truly systemically, we'll realize that there are some of our identities that we share. And so it becomes important then to also recognize, oh, what's the community that we're within What's the family system we're within and, and how do we, again, make it a journey for, for everyone to, to take together? I we think that one of the things- Left, Orlando, go for it. Yes, sorry, no, one of the things that you, you just talked about, and I think, Daniel, it's a, it's a great thing that you, you came up with this question that was way before about family. We can't afford not to be aware of our feelings because- uh, for example, now that I ha I'm having, I I'm seeing my kids grow. Uh, for example, I can I can see when 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 I don't handle something that I'm feeling, how it affects them, and how mm -hmm. how you replicate what you're seeing because of your what your parents do. So so uh, I can see how certain behaviors are inherited because of just being around, and uh, if you don't work on yourself then you're gonna produce damaged human beings uh, because you 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 in a way didn't address your mental health issues so so i think that it's it's really important for us to to be aware of what we're feeling and and also be aware of what you just said that our issues are not ours alone when we have a family it affects everyone so so i think that that's that's something that's it's kind of different and Actually, it's it's kind of funny because we, not 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 funny, but it, the awareness on mental health that we have to have would be great that everyone has it. Because yeah. if you would have that mental aware that, that awareness that you're supposed to be sane or you're supposed to be healthy in your mind, would produce better better people and better societies. So I guess it's kind of a it's a blessing in a way what what happened in in because it, it opened your mind in different ways that's that's it yeah i love lou's comment right it's give ourselves lots of grace and compassion along the way i think if i could just make a final remark i think as people leading organizations who have the lived experience i think in some way there's a massive amount of responsibility which is like we've been through the journey in some way we know that we're working with a bunch of people who are working on this and you know we want to get them to their you know destination a little faster perhaps and we know that they need to take their own time right so there's a there's a sense of responsibility to do this work um i think there's also a sense of you know for me i'm this eternal optimist right otherwise i wouldn't be doing this work i, I think there's a sense of optimism that all of us can do it and having the lived experience i feel just you know kind of exponentially helps that drive um yeah so for me i'm th this is really close to my heart so um, thank you for allowing me to be here yeah thank you both and for sharing so much of yourselves and your lives and thank you to our lovely um, participants with all of the amazing questions coming in um really feeling the the gratitude to have had this space and had this Beautiful conversation with the both of you. Thank you so much. We'll just wait and see all the nice things people say about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there goes a the heart. That's great. <laughs>
Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Lovely question. Thank you. We Thank could you get everyone. through half of them, I think. Yeah, just about. Super. Thank you. Have a lovely rest of the two days. Yeah. Global gratitude. Oh, that's that's nice. That's a nice one. Mm. Global gratitude to you, Orlando and Daniel, and all of our participants. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all the That's tech great. support.